the I'm gonna do the introduction. My name is Mapule Mulabi. I'm actually the founder of Grow in Math, uh, where I'm um, offering online math uh, tutoring for anyone from grade eight to grade twelve, or even a standard lower than that. And I've got my partner, which is Taina Munyai. She's the founder of Education Support Essay, where she provides um, um, career guidance. Uh, and a support, a career support to, to learners. And then as part of the introduction, may I please uh, request everyone to turn their videos off. The only people that we would like to, uh, to allow videos on, it will be our guest speakers. And thank you for joining us and we will be starting shortly. The meeting, our meeting is actually scheduled for an hour. Ah, uh, two hours, sorry, from 10 o'clock until 12 o'clock. Please, uh, for the learners or the, our, 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 our attendances, just to save on bandwidth or to save on data, please turn off your video and also just to avoid uh, clustering on the screen. So please, we, we humbly request that you turn off, turn off your videos and then for questions and put your speakers on mute in case maybe only we only allowing the our guest speakers to to not mute their 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 speakers but the rest of the people uh we expect your speakers to be muted all the time and if you have questions we will use uh please use the chat on the on the zoom where it's, it's actually available i don't know if you can see my case but if you go either at the bottom where you've got your unmute, your start, your, your mute or unmute, and your start video, your sh the sharing of screen. If you go more, then you'll find an option for actually uh, sending us a message via chat. So please, if you have any questions, uh, you can send the questions via that chat option. Okay, so this is our agenda. Agenda for today, it includes the following. It's, we've got introduction, where we've got opening and welcome that I've done. And we're gonna confirm the number of attendances and we're gonna introduce our guest. And then we've got, on the second point, we've got imp the importance of Career Expo. And the third point will be covering what happens beyond grade 12. And on our fourth item, we've got a presentation by our, our, our different uh, our guest. So we're gonna we're gonna have career presentations. Then our fifth, fifth item is questions and answers. The sixth item is remarks and closing. Okay, that is our agenda for today. Then I'm gonna go on to confirm the number of attendances. We've got. No. Yeah, we've we've got we've got uh about we've got 10, 10 guests that are with us today, but I'll hand over to Taina Munyai from Education Support SA to introduce our guest. Thank you. Taini. Okay. She has muted herself. Apologies for that. I'm, I'm sorry for that. Yes, so for our guests, we have Andrew. Andrew is the founder and CEO of Andrew Spama Inc. I uh, also have masters in social work. He also he was also involved or he attended um, the 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 the, the <laughs> sorry sorry Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> he was in Chicago and in Canada. Um, he attended the events on International Association of Social Workers. We also have Asine Chibubuze. He's the doctor. He has a PhD in geology and is also a lecturer at FETS. Chipware Dani is the IT professional with BTEC in information technology. 
we have got uh, Dr. Tolela Zulu. He's got the PhD, she's got the PhD in chemistry, so she's the chemistry professional. Chipwa Matozi uh, is a professional plant and machinery valuer. Erin Nechisaru is a she's a chartered accountant. We also have amongst ourselves Oitumelo Sikake. She's a professional in energy sector. She's also a founder and CEO of Sikake Energy Solutions. We have got Cassius Munyai. Um, we didn't confirm his attendance. Yeah, she's a, he's a commercial law student at VET. Uh, Mpotu. Uh, he is not amongst us today. He did send his apologies. We have got Eric Sitole, industrial engineering professional, and Ike or Ike Lehoro. Um, he's a cobbler, he's an entrepreneur. Um, we were supposed to have a data scientist, but uh, he did send his apology. For those that are not here, we, if you have questions, we will be able to send those questions through for, for answers. Okay. Thank you, Tiny. And the next item on our, on our agenda is, is uh, in the importance of the Career Expo and Tiny will take us through that. So basically what we, are, we want to achieve out of this event is career awareness. So we, also, we want to stimulate the interest and assist learners in their career choices. In that way, we also want them to understand the subjects that are required to study towards certain careers and also understand the dynamics and challenges of certain industry or industries of choice. We also hope that from this, there will be then a contact between professionals and learners um, who are interested in certain career paths. Thank you. Thank you, Tiny. And we'll be moving on to the item, what happens beyond grade 12. I'll be going through that one. So to our learners, as you, you are all looking forward to passing metric, but life does not end at passing metric or passing your grade, your grade, 12, your grade 12. So once you've uh, passed your grade 12, uh, the next uh, thing that happens is you can either enroll at the university or University of Technology or a, a TVET college. And for one to enroll in those institutions, you need to, to pass your metric with the following requirements. So for someone who will be eligible to enrolling at the university, is someone who will achieve a bachelor pass. And someone with a bachelor pass, you need to pass six of uh, the seven subjects that you, you would have enrolled in that year in your metric. Out of those subjects, four subjects uh, must be at least 59%, which is level four. And those subjects, those four subjects include your home language, but is excluding life orientation. So those are your, the requirements for you to make it to, to university, which uh, having a bachelor pass. Then the next uh, 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 type of institution is the University of Technology, which you require a diploma pass. So for you to acquire a diploma pass, you need to pass six of the, the seven subjects that you, you will have enrolled. And then also from those six subjects, four of those subjects must be at least 40% or level three. Inclu that include your home language, also excluding life orientation. Then the third uh, type of institution is a TVET college. Then for that one, you need a certificate pass. A certificate pass, you need 40% uh, in your home language, then two, two subjects above 30%, and you may fail uh, one subject. So if you only pass, if you, if you only have 40% in your home language, and then you have 
uh, obtained above thirty percent on two subjects, you are able to, you are eligible to qualify for an entry at a TVET college. So when you when you are studying, just please aim for the higher institution. Aim for university. If you fall, at least maybe you will fall for University of, Techn of Technology. If you fall lower, you will still be able to go to a TVET college. So thank you then. That's uh, about what happens to your net. And when you get to university, they will guide you further on what happens, or even our, our guest speakers, they will guide you on what happens beyond university. Thank you. The, then the next item we have on the agenda, it will be the career presentation by our, our guest. Our first guest is Andrew, Andrew Spama. So I will hand over to Mr. Spama to take us through. Andrew? I hope you are not muted. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mapule, for the opportunity and greetings to everyone. I'm talking to you. I'm in the UK where I am practicing as a social worker. Uh, social work is a very, it's one of those, it's like uh, engineering in South Africa because it's in high demand in places like uh, the UK, Australia uh so yes i studied at the university of pretoria uh at the time i was already old i think i was in my 30s when i went to university to start my first course in 2007 and then i studied and i went to do my masters there and i did some other courses uh in uh just finished another one in public administration and other certificates in uh, psychotherapy, coaching, labor relations, employee wellness, forensic social work. And I, I should indicate, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that education will never make you rich, especially going to uh, universities and all these things. But education helps you, is a tool that can make you be able to access opportunities better than someone that doesn't have it. So that is what one thing that I have learned as I'm studying further, that you can get knowledge, but knowledge without application can be really vital. Can we continue to the next slide? Yeah. All right. The highlights of my career, uh, obviously I started um, my schooling, university schooling very late, but at least at that time I knew what I wanted to do and why I wanted to do it. And that was very encouraging and motivating. And also I managed to go to America, uh, not because I was the smartest student in the in a way of smart, of getting high marks. High marks are important, but when you go to university, you realize that it's not just about high marks about passing the course and applying it. So I managed to join uh, one of the lectures to America in 2014, I went to uh, Canada to do a presentation to uh, the international uh, group, social workers working with groups. Then I completed my masters, something that I never dreamed of. Then I also managed to write a book in relation to my research, which where I researched about uh, conflict management in black African marriages. I wrote a book, uh, the title True Love Through Conflict, which is on, I can get it from Amazon online. And then also when I completed my postgraduate diploma in uh, uh, public administration and also working in the United Kingdom, which was also a highlight, something that I never dreamed of but here I am, I'm here. I'm busy writing my proposal for my PhD. Where I'm looking at uh, child protection and also continue talking relationships. Uh, on my Facebook, if you look for uh, talking relationships with Andrew Spama, that's where I post most of the work. One of the things that I'm passionate about is a relationship with money. 
relationship with money, how people have relationship with money. And I'm looking forward to start a South African Child Protection Institute, uh, which will look at child protection within Southern Africa and Africa at large. The future goal is to write books, journals, and training materials around child protection and also relationships. Thank you. Next slide, please. Is it this one? Next one. All right. Uh, obviously, to study social work, in the, at the moment, social work in South Africa uh, is oversaturated. There are a lot of trained social workers that are unemployed. But once you get two years experience, uh, you are able to apply outside the country. It costs a little bit of money, but it's worth it. But also there is also a light at the end of the tunnel. COVID-19 has dealt the country with a lot of psychosocial problems, which require social workers. And also gender-based violence is one of the things that has seen the demand of social workers and all the child, child protection issues that we are having. So as such, we are seeing more and more social workers getting employed. Uh, so study social work with the intention of, you know, when you want to make a difference in people's life. Uh, but when you are studying it, with the question of wanting to have money, you'll really find it a little bit challenging. And that is why I was saying to the organizers, it's about time that we start also teaching the young people about the issues of money. To enter a, a social work uh, in South Africa, uh, you need to check with your institution because they differ what their, is their requirement. And no social uh, student will be allowed to do the social work uh, program unless you have, uh, you have a, a proof that you don't have the criminal record because you'll be working with the children. And then uh, students should also be in position of food, uh, matriculation exemption certificate uh, with the average pass of 60% during their matriculation exams. And then the APS score, the result, results achieved four degrees subject plus two, and NSC subjects will be taken into account when you, want, when you are admitted. All right, uh, language requirements pass mark should be about 40, 50 to 59% level four. So those are some of the requirements if you want to study social work. And in studying social work, you can branch into different those specialization. Uh, you can become a, a forensic social work where you investigate. And uh, I want to tell you that social workers are employed almost everywhere. You got uh, social workers within SAPS, South African Police Services. You got social workers working in uh, all, all spheres, especially in employee wellness, whether it is in Transnet, there are some that are working in uh, uh, AXA, some are working at uh, the mines. Uh, you know, different spheres will have social workers because we address social, psychosocial problems. So it's a good career to go into, but as I said in the beginning, that it is not about getting the certificate. It's about sharpening the skill. Find your purpose. Once you have found the purpose, something that you are passionate about, pursue it and develop yourself. And it is very much important that we continue developing ourselves in line with our purpose. Education can only sharpen the skill that you are already having. It cannot give you that passion. You need to come with something when you go into education. I think that is about it. And thank you very much for your time. All the best. Thank you. And I want to apologize. I will not stand the whole session because I have to go to class now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Andrew. Our next uh, speaker, it will be Dr. Asinne Chibubuze from, you'll be telling us about the career in geology. Uh, over to you. Okay, you can move to the, to the next slide, but before you do that, I'd like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to kind of share what 
I've been doing and what I know about geology with the rest of the participants who managed to make the, the, the time, it is greatly appreciated. Um, if, 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 if we just kind of quick, take a, a small pause in terms of thinking about geology as, as, as such, I'll be talking about it from my personal experience. And don't move on to the next slide, please. Okay, I'll be talking about it from a personal experience. Can you just go back to the first slide? Simply because there's, there's a, a lot of misconception in terms of what geology is with respect as, uh, compared to things like mining engineering. You see that geology as, as, as a standalone, it's also a science of which in this, in this case, we are highly interested in understanding the earth as it is, what has happened to it, the, the kind of materials that we see. I, I mean, each and every one of us, wherever we are, we, we see rocks that we don't even kind of, in some cases, bother to try to work out what is what are they trying to tell us with respect to what has happened of, over time. And this is one of the things that as a geologist, we kind of specialize this in a lot. Okay, if I go back to, to where it all started for me, I, uh, I'm, I'm born and bred in, in, in Chaur, which is in Mbopo. I went to a preschool which was back then known as Bohana Preschool. And after that, after, after getting the school liver certificate, I went to Chauru Primary School, which is literally less than a kilometer away from where the, the preschool was. Then I completed my grade seven, which back then was standard five, and then went to Mbiru Secondary School, and that's where I got my, my matric. And between Mbiru and going to the University of Witwatersrand, that is where the biggest decision had to be made in terms of what I really wanted to do. Of where, by the time I went to, to, to university, I completed BSc, BSc honors and the PhD. Can we go to the next slide? So if I, when I go back to, to how I ended up deciding that I'm gonna be a geologist, there are certain things which played a major role in me deciding that geology was the career that I needed to follow. First of all, my father had a collection of, of stones that I never understood what they were all about. It was a coal sample, it was a quartzite, and some, some pyrite samples in the drawers. I just enjoyed going to his room to have a look at all those rocks, but never understood what, what the, the, the importance was. And at some point when I started realizing what they were, I thought that the pirate was gold because it looks like gold. And when I tried to find out where did he cook that, then I was told that no, one of the family members who used to work in the mines collected them and give, uh, gave them to him as some sort of a, a collection. And that is where this, the, the spark of inter, getting this interest in the rocks around me, including the environment that I'm, I was growing up in, which was well surrounded by mountains which are well exposed and rocks are just everywhere kind of started coming up but until I went to 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 Miri High School the the exposure was still thinking in terms of mining engineering as the way to get to understand all these things not realizing that mining was a different field by itself and it was only during a week where the explanation for, for in terms of what geology was all about came into being in terms of my understanding. And that immediately just resonated with what I wanted to do in terms of the adventure which is involved and the fact that you're gonna spend a lot of time being outdoors. Okay, next, next slide. So when, if I can look at the highlights that uh, are kind of related to the career as it is in terms of what I've experienced and the challenges, just because of geology alone, I've managed to travel all, or not all, but five of the seven continents. And not just traveling alone, it's traveling and doing work in these continents. Simply because geology is not limited to, to, to my space, like just in South Africa, it's everywhere. And at the same time, I've managed to work and manage some of the major uh, collaborative work or research in the field of geology, of which the biggest one is the WEXI project, which looked at discovering and understanding the, 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 the mineral faces in, in the West African Craton. 
and that kind of helped a lot in terms of developing the economies of the countries which are involved where right now we are talking about mines which are operational simply because of the research that I have been part of. And that is where geology really gives back into the community in terms of growing the economy and growing, growing the, the, the human capital as it is. And over and above that, I mean, there's, as, as a lecturer now at VETS, there's giving back in terms of making sure that I produce students in terms of their honors and MSc degrees, of which when I look at, the, at that, it's much more fulfilling than just working at a mine and getting money and not really giving back to the community as such. And one of the most important highlights is realizing that one can have such a big impact that you can publish things in an international platform where people can read your work and appreciate it and actually get something useful out of, out of that work. And one of the biggest things that I think it's not just me alone, but majority of us, in this case, I'll even put the, 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 the word in quotation as in like, as black people, we kind of face a lot, is having to prove ourselves to the rest of our, our colleagues. And I got to a point where I realized that that, is, that was holding me back a lot, simply because each and every time I do something, I'll try to live up to the standard of someone, not realizing that actually I just have to be myself. And when that happens, I end up producing the best of what I can do. And one of the biggest challenge over and above the having to prove myself was my past, which again, like I'm saying, if you look at the background, most of the time we look at our background and we kind of allow it to determine what we can end up becoming later on in life. And I had to accept where I come from, the challenges that had to come up with where I come from, and realize that I need to make use of those to, to the level best in terms of using them as a stepping stone to get up to where I wanted to be. And there is this constant fear of, of the unknown, which again, it's not, I don't think it's just me alone. Everyone have this fear of not knowing what is gonna happen if I do something. And that we end up allowing that to hold us back and not achieving what we really want to achieve. So I also had to deal with that. And that is a lifelong struggle that I'm constantly dealing with. And I'm sure that each and every one of us will constantly have to deal with that. And I just put a quotation there from Nelson Mandela, which kind of deals with the fact that each and every one of us have this fear that we need to keep on overcoming on daily basis. And it is that what, what, what kind of sets us apart in terms of what we end up achieving. Next slide. So if, if, if you are listening to this, to this presentation and you're asking yourself, is geology a career you want to follow? Yes, geology is, is it's a very nice career too to be part of. It's an applied science, and as an applied science friend, that all the other basic science subjects are, are quite critical. So I've just indicated some of the key subjects that you need to make sure that you have, which is the English language, mathematics, and physical sciences, of which you see that the pass rate is expected, the lowest rate is that is expected there is roughly about 60%. So which means you need to be working to achieve at least 60% and above for all the, the subjects that are critical for, for you to be able to enroll in this kind of career, career path. And some of the additional subjects are things like geography, biology, and an additional language, which of course it's going to be your home language. It can be Venda, Zulu, or whatever language it is. So when I look back at the, at the, at the career as it is and at, on, on myself, it is. It is always. It always seems impossible until it's done. Like what Nelson Mandela said. I mean, I never thought that I would have a PhD at the end of my schooling years, but here I am sitting, and I have a PhD. And now the target is probably going to as far as having a full professorship title. But all those things are capable simply because of the passion that I have for for geology. And I think with passion, or if you have passion for what you are doing it's unlikely that you end up failing in whatever it is that you, you are kind of targeting. So um, that's, that's where I'm gonna end for now, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Asine. Uh, <coughs> our next speaker, it will be from the uh, career in information technology and uh, Chifiwa Raidani will be speaking to that. Oh, okay, let me just make sure he's not muted. Right. No, I'm, I'm not muted. I'm sorry. I was just oh. activating the video. 
Thank you so much, Mapule, for the opportunity to share my experiences and um, provide information really for, for those of the future. Um, so um, I'm Chifuare Dani, like the slide indicates, and I've studied information technology. And to give you a bit of background in, um, in my journey, can you go to the next slide? Um, so, so I, 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 came, I come from Chilamba in Limpopo, um, in the Bundus, basically. And I got exposed to, to information technology, just like you guys, in a career expo that was hosted um, at our school. I studied at Tengwe um, High School for, for my secondary. Um, and the reason really why I chose information technology was because I was, uh, I was very interested in, in, in uh, tech things, gadgets, uh, broken, old broken uh, radios, for instance. Um, I used to, to play with those a lot. Uh, I used to take motors out of all toys and try and um, build a cardboard helicopter from, from, from those. So the only thing that resonated to me really at the Career Expo was, was information technology because it had computers involved. Um, and the one big thing that, that I found to be a challenge, um, at least at the beginning of my, my, my studies at, at Varsity, I studied at the University of Technology, um, was computer literacy. Um, forget business acumen because that's for later in, 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 in the IT uh, career. Uh, but computer literacy is kind of the core of information technology as a whole. Everything to do with information technology is, is about computers. And we had very little exposure um, to and, and access to computers. So uh, coming from a very basic computer training to all of a sudden having to code and, and writing code is actually telling a computer what to do which is a vastly bigger level um, compared to, to, to other students that uh, perhaps had uh, the privilege to be exposed to, to just such things at an early age or at your level um, being, being high school. Um, but three months in, I still managed to be able to actually develop code. And the thing that was critical to enabling me to be able to do that was the subjects, mathematics and, 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 and science. So the, that's the criticality of those two subjects uh, when it comes to IT as well. You, you, you need to score good marks on those subjects in order to be admitted um, to do a degree or a diploma in information technology. Um, and I think it's level five um, that's required um, from, from, from both varsity and the University of Technology. Um, and my summary for career highlights has just been the transition, really. Um, and it, it'll, it'll be apparent on the next slide um, when it comes to business development and what has been happening in the IT world. Um, so if you look at the first, um, at the first sentence there, speaking about IT continuing to change the way that we live, um, the way that we play, the way we do business, um, it's, it's, it's the fastest growing and is still the fastest growing. It was the fastest growing when I started working or when I started studying this back in 2004. Um, and it's going to be like this for a while. I think a century from now still. Um, hence, I'm bringing up four IR there in brackets. So we're going to dive right into, into where IT plays in the, in the global economy and, and how you guys can actually play a part in it if you're interested in this career path. Um, so if you look at uh, 1784, the timeline industry one, um, we're using water to, 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 to produce steam, to power trains and power production and machines. Um, you skip 86 years later, 1870, um, introduction of electricity, um, enabling mass production. Suddenly we have got lights and um, electricity to, to power machines and we become more productive and, and, and less hard labor. Um, 101 years later, industry 3.0, um, the use of, of IT and the internet to digitize production. That's when you started having the internet. You started having really good machinery that are able to do work that man can do. Um, and then 51 years later brings us to now um, where, where this, this um, industry 4.0, that's where we are for IR, right? The fourth industrial revolution, the application of artificial intelligence, digital network and so forth. Um, these are... These are the things that um, even though we're a third, uh, third world country, 
um, they are here and they are required. The skills and, 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 and knowledge and, and qualifications that are, you're seeing on the screen right now are playing a critical part in actually enabling businesses um, transform and actually rule the economy into the future. So, so that's what I'm going to talk to you about the now, which is mostly artificial intelligence in summary, trying to take your brain and actually have a computer operate like your brain. Um, I'll, I'll sift through these careers on the screen quickly, just to give you an idea of what options you have. You've got the web developer who, de who designs the internet. Um, basically, you write code to develop a Twitter or Facebook page so people can interact on it, click buttons and so forth. Database administrator is about the information, the data. Um, when you type a tweet, it goes somewhere in the background where you can't see it. I'll talk about what is, is, is done with that later. Um, IT security specialist, uh, you're basically um, a policeman for the internet, a policeman for um, systems in, in, in various companies so that people don't kind of steal information. You'll hear about hackers and so forth. You would have read about that. IT help desk technician, the guys that fix computers, hardware mostly, but also software when you have issues. Software engineer are basically people that build software. Um, that, that sits behind the scene on everything that you see, your phone, for instance, um, if you're an iOS or, or Android in the background, the software engineer designed and, and um, determines the operation of that. Video game designer that speaks for itself. Robotics engineer are people who write code that tell machinery what to do. So this, this is kind of the same as software developer, which you will see um, on, the, on the bottom, there's a computer programmer. Um, but basically, that's, that's the core of the IT that is non-infrastructure or hardware, right? IT project manager, jack of all trades, you need to understand everything and be able to have everyone talk to each other. Network administrator, you're making sure people have got internet and you can set up your internet at the municipality, for instance. Um, I'll skip through to data scientist, cognizant of time. Um, but a data scientist is one of the, of the new careers that is um, came up now for, for, for IR in terms of artificial intelligence and being able to actually write smart code. Um, hence, you require maths and physical science because you'll be writing big formula um, that actually compose algorithms that are going to be thinking like a human being. You need, computers are going to be making decisions instead of people. Um, and then you've got um, computer hardware engineer, which is basically the person that creates computers, um, determines the architecture and how a computer operates. Okay, so let's go on to the next slide, um, just to conclude this. Um, this is basically uh, the, the overall view of how IT links into the business world and economics. Um, on the far left, you've got source, and then you've got analytics platform and consumption. Source is anything where uh, data is collected. It's a interfacing system where you type in information, um, it could be Twitter, like I said earlier on, or it could be a point of sale system when you go to pick and pay and buy bread. Um, when they scan it, uh, there's an entry that's created and data is stored at the back so that the company can know how much information or how much bread they have left in stock and so forth. Um, robotic process automation is basically, instead of someone capturing information from paper, um, they actually um, have a robot using a camera to scan a paper. So there's a complaint that people are losing jobs because of this, but unfortunately, that's the reality of the 4IR. Um, robots are going to be doing more work than, than human beings. Um, when you look at Internet of Things, you've got sensors, a company like Tesla, for instance, that, that creates um, self-driving cars. It's all sensors. Uh, they take information from the road and cameras, um, avoid collisions uh, and, and real-time understanding of, of, um, of what the car should do under what circumstances. Again, trying to replicate the human experience in a computer. Um, and obviously, yeah, the, 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 whole, the whole concept of data is a new oil is because of that. There's a lot of data that uh, people collect. Companies like Techalot, Google, Amazon, Facebook, and Twitter, they're becoming rich because they're able to use data to derive information, which is where artificial intelligence comes in. You write code that's going to enable computers to make decisions and have people make good decisions by comprehending tons and billions of records. So... Uh, and, and that doesn't happen on its own. You have infrastructure, like I said, which is computers um, or hardware, and hence why all, all, all the other specialties are still um, very critical to the success of the fourth industrial revolution. Um, 
So um, overall, that's, that's kind of what IT is in a nutshell. Obviously, happy to really discuss with you further um, offline um, for those who are interested in really exploring the career in, in IT. It's a very exciting time for, for, for the career path. Um, and uh, there's a shortage of skills still in today. Uh, there's still a long time to go before we, we become a matured country in terms of technology and, and, and innovation in that space. So. Um, um, I will end it there, and um, I hope you guys got a spark out of out, out of what's what's possible out there. Thank you. Thank you, Chifua. Um, our next uh, item will be career in chemistry, and Dr. Kolela Zulu will take us through that. Over to you, Kolela. I hope you're not muted. Let me just make sure. Oh, okay, not muted. Over to you, Kalela. Thanks, thanks, Mapule. Can I can I share my screen? Is it different from the the presentation we have? Okay, no, that that's fine. Let's 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 go with that. Um, okay. um To start off with, let me thank Tyana and uh, Mapule for inviting me to this platform uh, to talk to young people and uh, probably motivate them in terms of pursuing or considering a, a, a career in chemistry. Thank you. So um, just by the way of introduction, I am Olelwa uh, Zulu. I was born and bred uh, in the Eastern Cape in a small town called um, Alice. And uh, my career or the, the base uh, of my career was uh, my studies in, in chemistry up until um, PhD level. I am currently working at uh, the CSIR, which is the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. And what I'm currently doing there is managing the strategic uh, research development and innovation um, activities of the CSIR. So what that entails in, in, in short uh, brief summary is that we, we, we prioritize and strategize what kind of uh, research and innovation activities uh, will be meaningful for the CSIR so that they are able to, to translate to, 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 to socio impact uh, of, of South Africa. And I'm also an independent director for SENGEN um, where we're looking at um, agricultural products uh, in, in, in genomics and, and genetics. So the overall of my presentation will just take you through what I have done in terms of the career and why I chose this particular path and uh, the highlights that uh, have been included in that journey and the challenges that I face uh, in my everyday life uh, at work and uh, the high school subjects that are required for you to be able to, to go through this. So the, the basic minimum of this, as uh, mentioned by the speakers before me, you must have a grade 12 uh, certificate. And as a minimum, that is, um, that is supposed to be a, a degree level. Uh, I did metric quite a, a long time ago. But in our time, it was uh, an exemption, which I understand by the standards of today, uh, it's NSC degree. So you, you, you've got to pass a uh, metric. And uh, the second step to that um, is that I studied a, a BSc uh, Applied Chemistry at the University of Guazulu Natal. That took me three years. When I qualified for that, I had them to spend a year doing an honors, um, uh, an honors, uh, an honors qualification, which is uh, an advanced form of a, of a, of a BSc. Uh, at that point, I, I, when I finished my honors, I, I, I wasn't too sure what I wanted to, to do, but I, I, I had already established that I was, I was liking what I wanted to do and, and, and wanted to study further. And I enrolled for an MSc, uh, which, uh, which now translated to uh, beyond um, the, 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 the basic qualification of a BSc. You start going deeper and going re doing research projects. And I, I, I did that, it took me two years. And uh, while I was doing my MSc, I was convinced that I wanted to go all the way. 
and do uh, meaningful research. And I did that and um, enrolled for a PhD, which, uh, which took me another three years. So in total, I spent from the time I was in first year up until PhD, I, I spent 10 years in an institution of higher learning and I qualified with a PhD in the end. And I am currently registered with the University of Pretoria, um, doing an MSc studying technology and innovation management, which helps me understand how do we then, maybe in institutions such as CSIR, try to translate the research so that it, 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 it translates to the ordinary South African, how do, we, how do we identify technologies that speak to the social challenges that we're experiencing in the country? And that and, and, and some of those projects that I'm doing with the MSc uh, speak to that. In terms of why I, I chose this career, I, it, it was uh, um, purely out of passion. I, I loved sciences uh, in high school. There was nothing else that made sense to me uh, except, um, except the sciences. I wanted to have a better and deeper understanding of the world and how it, 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 it operates. And uh, the only way I could express that was um, through a career in the sciences. I also felt that most of the global challenges that we, 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 we're facing in terms of health, poverty, elevation, and innovation, as the last speaker has alluded to in terms of 4IR and all those things, even though at that time, I didn't have an, a, a, an understanding of that. I, I knew that um, to be able to be a center of solving all these problems, a career in science would be able uh, would enable me to express all that. I also understood that there are great career uh, prospects in 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 the sciences. It's one of it was one of those um, careers that had uh, scarce uh, skills that were needed uh, by the country. Then, so based on those, I, I I decided to pursue a career in that. Some of the highlights in this is that I I, I received a, a bursary uh, from Sasol to study for my for my masters. Uh, which meant that my parents didn't have the burden of paying for my university fees. And uh, when I decided to pursue my studies further, I was given a free bursary for PhD, they waiver your fees. Uh, in some universities, even from master's level, you, they can waiver your fees, which basically means that you can study for free. Um, I was uh, selected as one of the brightest young minds, um, which is a which is a, a a a project that looks at young people that are doing wonderful things on the ground in terms of uh, impacting their communities. Um, some some of these uh, I've, I've done throughout uh, my my career. They they're not related to 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 my career in 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 in. in in chemistry, but what I'm trying to get at, or what I'm trying to, I'm hoping that you will look at and, and, and see from this is that even though you are skilled in one aspect of, 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 of a career path, you can use your personality and other things that you are involved in to get opportunities uh, to, to express yourself. Um, like currently, I'm, 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 I'm part of, uh, the Innovation Committee for the Moses Kotani Institute in, in KZN and advising the government um, in, in, in KZN, the government of the province in KZN on all things innovation, which basically means what it is that the, the, the province of um, KZN can look in in terms of innovation and using science um, to improve uh, the life of um, ordinary citizens in, in, in the province. I've, I've published a few journal authors, uh, a, a few journal articles in, 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 in high impact journals in, in the world. And I'm also part of uh, Black Women in Science. Um, in terms of uh, challenges that I, that I face on a daily basis with what I, what I do now, is that we, we, we don't have enough resources in terms of finances and um, funding projects that we that we work on. We we have funding from the DSI, and we must find innovative ways of how to prioritize uh, innovative and exciting projects that are going to be able to take the country forward. There's always pressure and deadlines 
which is what makes me thrive because I, I, I work well under pressure. There's also the fact that the research that we work on and uh, facilitates takes a little bit of time in terms of the process from yeah, the, 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 the inception idea and finally having products that uh, can penetrate the market. But it's, it's, it's going through the process and facilitating with some of our researchers that makes it all exciting. And uh, there's, in terms of time management, there's finding time to do all the work that's required because there's always requests from every other um, stakeholder that we work with uh, to, 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 to try and put uh, things to, to, to perspective for them. And in terms of a national, uh, the requirements uh, that are the subjects that are required for, for this, and I think somebody has alluded to this um, before, uh, there's, you need to have physical sciences, life sciences, or agricultural sciences in, 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 in your bouquet of metric subjects. Pure mathematics is also one of the requirements. English and uh, life orientation. This is based on, on the requirements from UKZM. But what I want to stress with this is that even though all of these are required at a uh, level four, uh, gaining entry into university is a competitive process. Um, I would urge you to aim for as high marks as possible because you have other people that are applying and vying for the same spot. So even though you meet the minimum requirements, you might not be accepted. So to be able to be in a position to gain favor, you must at least get uh, way beyond the levels that are, that are required. Uh, for, for, for study into, into, into chemistry. Uh, I think I'll, I'll, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will stop there for now. Um, if I, I, I think in, in, in the last slide, I'd given my contact details. If uh, there's any specific questions that you have in terms of what other things you can do, with this career, I'll be I'll be I'll be open uh, to such. Yes, there's there's my email address. It's zulu the number one at gmail.com. I will I will respond to the, to to those questions and then we can take it from there. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Tolelua. Uh, our next uh, item is to be on career end valuation. And Chifiwa Madozi will take us through that. Chifiwa, over to you. Hopefully you are not muted. Let's just make sure. Okay, over to you. Did I unmute you? Apologies about that. Chifua? Okay. We just... seem to have lost him. Is it? Okay, we will come back to Chifua. Let's just go to to the next item while we try to get out of Chifua. Apologies. So we'll go we'll go to the next item, which is career in accounting, and Elelwani Nechifauli will take us through that. Elelwani. Just make sure that you are also not muted. Okay. Right now for the invitation, I'm going to be taking you through the career in accounting, looking at my journey, where did I begin, where did all started and where I am at the moment and what are the career opportunities if you consider a career in, in, in the field of accounting or as a CA. 
Um, I was born in Limpopo at Haramancha, it's a village. I think it's important to talk about my background because I went to a public school and um, some of the speakers spoke about the, the challenges that we get or the impact that our background have in us going forward. I'm a third born, I'm married, mother of twins. I'm a Christian, I'm a CA by profession, passionate about mentoring and developing young talent. I live in Jobek. Um, we can go to the next slide. So my career started at um, in Limpopo, Haramancha, as I've said. I did my primary, um, early primary schooling and the senior primary, and I did my matric at St. Tumore Secondary School. Um, after completing my matric, I went to Vets University to study BCom Accounting. Initially, I wanted to do BAC, um, which I will speak about it in, in the next slide, or on the slide later on, but I was not accepted in, in that uh, degree. I ended up doing the, the become Accounting. After become Accounting, um, there's a bit of gap between the first graduate degree to my postgraduate, um, which I will also talk about it later. I, I did my postgraduate diploma in applied accounting science, which um, others know it as CTA. Um, I will also speak about it later on. Um, next slide. Um, what inspired me to choose this career? I mean, back in the days, um, with some of us, we were not exposed to Career Expo. It's either the surrounding that I was at that, that inspired me. When I was in Standard 4, one of my sisters was studying accounting. That's why I put the accounting textbook there. And I was fascinated about this course um, or this textbook. I had to ask, what is it that you do? Why does it like a computer and a phone um, next to it? But I think the, the textbook at the time, it has money and some calculator. That excited me. I couldn't get the picture. And I'm like, OK, work with money, with numbers. I was very good with numbers um, at, 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 at school from primary until high school. But I also learned about these two phenomenal women um, at, 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 at the time, Wendulia Uhabe, who, who studied BCom, and I was interested on in what does she do? Um, um, and one of the, this older guy, when he knew about my second name as Wendy, he told me about her and I was like, hmm, okay, she's a business lady. What did she study? What did she do? So she studied BCom. I'm like, okay. So that accounting, that commerce, there's a link. And there's a, when I was in high school, I learned about um, the first black CA, Nkulule uh, Gobodo. And I was like, huh, okay. So we do have a career in chartered accounting and there's a first black woman. So maybe I can be the third, the, the hundred or thousand. Uh, black women to qualify. So that's why I chose this career. I was passionate about numbers, um, passionate about business and uh, figures. Um, I was not into other subjects. Let's go to the next slide. So highlights in my career, um, you'll see the picture there when I was um, confirmed as a chartered accountant. Um, it was not an easy journey. Um, so it, I take it as a highlight because the dream was to be a CA, but I was not accepted in the CA uh, degree. I had to do BCom, which require you to convert or a longer route. And having to end up in a CA was a big achievement for me, um, you know, to achieve that dream that I had when I was young. And one of the highlights is a picture with a group of, 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 of people there who look a bit serious. So after qualifying, I was given an opportunity to head a program that that train trainee that train trainees that become CA, and being passionate about mentoring and developing. Now I'm in a space where it has nothing to do with numbers, but to do with people. Um, that I end up developing people that will be future CA, which I think is one of the highlights in my career. And yeah, it's a bit exciting to end up working or doing what you're more passionate about, even though I didn't study in the human development side. Let's go to the next slide. 
So challenges uh, that I have faced it was, you know, fear that I will I ever will I ever qualify as a PA. Like I that's a bit of background. Okay, like I've said, um, when I went to vets, I was taken on a become degree, and that it, it kind of demotivated me to say maybe I don't really want to qualify as a CA anymore, or I will never be a CA. I'm not good enough, and that fear builds up, and I end up diverting away from the dream of becoming a CA. And later on, um, after graduating, I realized, well, I'm capable. If I graduated at, at BCom, I can still pursue the CA route, which require me to study a postgraduate um, degree in order for me to sit for the CA, for the CA um, uh, background. So that challenges uh, that I face or oh, being able to pass that first degree motivated me to go further, to study further. And it took me longer because you are required to sit um, for five subjects in your post grade and you must pass them at a one go. So I failed a lot, but what motivated me was perseverance, determination, and the dream of becoming a chartered mm -hmm. accountant. So the CA route, what is, what is it that you are required? Um, I'm not gonna talk about the accounting route because it, at the end, if you want to be uh, at the peak of, of being an accountant, you must aim to become a chartered accountant. Um, there's other career opportunities in the field of accounting, which I'll speak about them later. But for me, the CA is, is like um, cherry on top in, in, in our profession as, 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 as accountant. So you will need core meds or pure meds. You will need, a, on your grade 12 um, results, you will need um, university entrance level four. You also need uh, English uh, to do well in your English. Uh, in terms of accounting, if you're studying accounting, it's good, but it's not required. You may be studying history and geography or science or doing biology, as long as you have pure maths and good English uh, and you are entrance level, four, they will take you. Um, and then at university, you need to apply to study Bachelor of Accounting Science in universities that are psych accredited. <clears throat> Not all universities that, that provide uh, this become are accredited by psycha. So that will take you longer if you, you, you do um, another, on, in, you study in other universities that are not accredited. Now you can even study this become online. So there's, there's a private university that that offer that opportunity. And you will need a postgrad. The degree will take you three years. And then you'll need a postgrad diploma in accounting science or CTA, which will take you a year. If you're studying it part time, it will take you two years. And then you will need to enter into a three year articles at an audit firm. Um, audit firms, those are your KPMG, your Deloitte, your uh, PwC. You need to Google them, they are there. When you go to Psycho website, they will give you a list of all companies that provide articles. And then I did mine at a commercial company like Valor World. So your telecom, your Jobek municipalities, your, those, they do offer those articles. So if you're not taken at KPMG, it's not the end of the world. You can go to other companies. And you will need to sit for two exam boards that are conducted by Psyca, which you need to pass them. There's an initial test competency and there's a final one. After you, you pass those um, exam boards, you become uh, a certified or chartered accountant and you get your membership with Psyca. Let's go to the next slide. Um, Psyca membership will definitely open opportunities or many doors for you and uh, career opportunities are endless. You can be a CEO, a CFO, an executive director. I've put human resources as a director there because one of the courses that you study, it's strategy, you learn, you study risk management. So it's, it's, it's not only going to focus on numbers. So you need to be open-minded. Um, I mean, if you, 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 you love numbers, you, you can be a, a financial director. But if you start, you became a CA, but like myself, you are into people's development, you can end up as a human resources director. 
So you will add a, a value there because during the whole training program of three years, you get a, a diverse knowledge in terms of business operation. Um, and yeah, those are, are the career opportunities that, that you can consider and that you can end up doing or venture into it. And um, I think I'll end with this quote that education is a passport to the future for tomorrow belong to those who prepare for it today. So you need to start preparing now. Some of us, I knew about what I wanted to, to do um, when, when I went to standard six, which is your grade eight now. Now, I wanted to be a chartered accountant. And no matter how hard it was, I had to work towards that. And yeah, thank you. And if you have any questions, you can send them through. I will send my details to Tiny to, to put them up for anyone who's interested to know more. Thank you, Elelwani. We do have a question and answer session after all the speakers have presented. So I will now go back to Chifiwa, as we had lost him just before this one. Just give me a moment. Okay, so our next item is career evaluation, which is Chifiwa Madozi. So let me just unmute him. Okay, over to you, Chifiwa. Morning, 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 everyone. Morning. Uh, where well, I will begin more into the uh, the field itself because the field is one of those fields whereby they are not uh, uh, well known to public as per se, if one could put it that way. So the experience for me uh, to be able to to be exposed to the career was because uh, it was an accident career that I happened to choose, unfortunately, due to the fact that I was prepared on my matric in terms of what I want to choose and what I wanted to be in the future. So my story will be more into my personal experience with the career and how I found it to be when I was already into the career. So what happened was I, I wanted to be a town and regional planner to which my maths was not uh, uh, suffice to, 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 to be accepted at the University of Johannesburg. So that's whereby I opted to, to choose this career because it was in line with uh, uh, the career that I wanted to choose. So down the career, that's where I discovered that the career is it's, it's not, it's not exposed and then there is a lot of opportunity within the career. And then uh, I'm, I'm just experiencing Okay, Chifua has uh, network challenges. Let's maybe do his slide at the end. Let's move on just for the sake of time. Let's move on to our next uh, speaker. Apologies for that. So our next uh, line, our next uh, item is career in energy and we do Melo Sikhake will take us through that. We do Melo. Thank you Mapula, good morning everyone. All right, so I will take you through uh, my career in energy and where it started and what qualifications have actually led me to where I am today. You can move to the next slide. All right, so my name is Bidu Melo Sikhake and I am from Karangua in Pretoria, it's a nice township. So it's very important to, to set the tone or the, um, the basis of, of my background so that you would understand as to you know, where I'm coming from and how I'm more appreciative of where I am right now. So when I was in high school, I went to Charlton Frost College of Education. So it's a small little private school in Pretoria North. 
And in my matric year, I still didn't know what I wanted to study. So I'm pretty much sure all of you are just sitting there thinking, what are you going to study? Because it's very difficult when someone asks you in grade 9 or grade 10, even in, in matric, to say, what do you want to do for the rest of your life as a career? When you haven't even been out there to understand what types of careers exist. So I was fortunate enough to, to have someone within my neighborhood who was studying geology who then recommended that I actually register for it. Um, I took the science stream and one thing I knew that I didn't want to do that all my classmates were going into was engineering because everybody who did science ended up studying some form of an um, engineering degree. So when I started learning about geology, I've decided I will latch onto it and see how far that will take me. Uh, so one of the challenges is that you do your, your um, undergrad, you do your honors, you start looking for a job. I was not fortunate enough to, to get a bursary that allows you to do vacation work or to do an internship. So I had to really struggle to look for a job. And that's when I couldn't find anything in geology and I found something in oil and gas. So I did my graduate um, training in an oil and gas company and I did not work as a geologist at all. So I did not practice. So I ended up being, you know, an oil and gas field engineer. So something that I didn't want to be associated with, I ended up working as an engineer, believe it or not. And as you go on in, in, in one's career, I want you to really understand that your preferences or your interests will change. And what you choose to, to study in your first year will also change, you know, throughout even your schooling career. By the time you graduate, you might find that you are graduating to something that you didn't even start off with, and that's okay. Don't beat yourself up for it, but make sure that you are always well informed. So I went on, I did my master's um, in science, um, my MSc in oil and gas engineering. So my undergrad, I did that in the University of Pretoria, and my master's, I did that at the University of Wits. And currently, I'm studying again, so I'm doing my master of management in energy leadership. Hopefully, I'll graduate in the next coming year or so. Um, so taking back to, 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 to my career highlights, I have traveled a lot of, 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 of around the world. I've started working, as I said, as an um, oil and gas engineer for a service company where I've worked in South Africa. I've worked in the United States. I've um, done some training in, in, in Dubai. And later on, I worked for, for Sasol, where I... I am currently and I'm working in Mozambique. So it, the career highlights for me is the traveling, meet, meeting new people and actually learning on the ground, you know, hands on learning and learning from people versus learning from the books. And um, we can go to, to the next slide. Great. So you might be asking yourself, what is energy? Um, where I am in oil and gas, energy is very broad and it is really a hot topic right now in our country. And I know um, in school you are learning about renewable energy and non-renewable energy and you know what the difference is. So predominantly for me, I am in the non-renewable energy. So it's quite challenging as well to try and explain to people why I'm still in the fossil fuel space um, because it's still a very relevant section of the industry that one needs to, to, to be part of because it's a building blocks of, of what we do in the economy of, of, of South Africa. You can move into the next slide where um, I will try and explain to you how we actually use oil and gas to, to, to actually produce the products that we actually buy in today. So we have exploration drilling production, refineries and transportation. So you find that where I am currently, where my geology degree is actually helping me is through exploration and drilling of oil and gas. And then we, once we drill, we explore, we drill for these um, resources, they then get refined and, and then they get transported to, 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 to industry where the end product can be used to give you the products that you use today, including the laptop that we have. You can move into the next slide. So these are the kind of petroleum products that we currently have. So what I do on a day-to-day -day basis is to ensure that 
at the end of the day, at home, you have your gas heater working, you have petrol in your car, you have the sanitizers that we are now using. You know, so it's very important to understand how energy comes about in the different forms of energy and how being in, in industry, you can actually play a role in developing your own communities. So that's one of the things that we look into as well. So in, in, in my career, I've had few challenges in the sense that, you know, you start working and the industry changes like now we have COVID and then you get retrenched. You know, um, th that is life. That is something that you need to keep in mind that you will face challenges. But one of the most important thing that you have to keep in mind is that you need to reinvent yourself all the time. You need to make sure that you join professional networks or professional associations. Even when you get to university, don't just be a student. There's a lot of changes that take place from moving from being a high school student to a university student. That's where you start networking. That's where you start building yourself. That's where you start showing people who you are. You know, you're not just confined in the spaces of your high school. Now you're out in the world where at the end you need to prove yourself and make sure that you get out and you go study so that's how you actually go on and that's how I went on in trying to 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 you know tackle the challenges that I had faced in my career so far and and I really want you to to, to know that going forward you can do the same for yourself as well okay move into the next slide please so you must be asking yourself okay what do I need to study to do either oil and gas engineering or petroleum engineering um, you need to really have the basic of the basic that's the building blocks you need to have physical science and pure mathematics and they all need to be on in, in, on higher grade because you know there's a lot of people there's a lot of competition you can end up even studying overseas so you need to make sure that you put in all the hard work in, in high school especially starting from from grade 10 if you you haven't really started focusing much on on, on your um subjects um geography is not important as such it's, a, it's a good to have if you have it but the most important is physical science pure mathematics and english you know because the industry is so global you can work anywhere around the world so it's very important that you know you, it, you have a good understanding of, of english so that you can communicate with everyone can move on to the next slide, please. So <clears throat> in terms of what you can study in university, you can study a lot of subjects. You don't necessarily have to study um, engineering to be in the oil and gas industry or to be in an energy industry. You know, you can study um, environmental sciences. You can even um, study to be a chartered accountant, but you know, those are the kind of careers that will still allow you to work within the industry. But if you want to have a hands-on experience and, and, and also have the, the, you know, the privilege to travel even more to in, in various countries to, to build yourself as a person, you know, you, you can really stick to, to, to the engineering part, especially if you want to be in the exploration side of things. But if you want to work on the commercial side, you can also still go and, and study um, commercial subjects. But for where I am currently, it's definitely a must for you to, to, to go into the technical route to study the geology, um, engineering, any kind of engineering, you know, because the training is very, is very good that the companies actually give you and you are set to actually get into the um, industry. There are various institutions you can study, but if you are looking at studying specifically um, energy related um, degrees and oil and gas specific degrees, you will have to look into studying at the Stellenbosch University or at WITS as well and also at the University of the Western Cape where they have petroleum geology, something that I didn't know when I was studying um, mining geology at University of Pretoria but if you want to go specific to petroleum geology you can then go to University of the Western Cape because they have a very great um, program stay that is specific to the energy industry. And then um, you might be asking yourself where can I expect to work? We all know there's BP, there's Shell, there's Sassel, you know Caltech. You can also even find yourself working for the Department of, of Energy um, where you are providing, um, you know, advisors or in engineering work to, to, to the department. So there are various areas you can work in. Even consulting firms, you can use your technical expertise to, to consult um, in either Ernest & Young or PwC. So there's a lot of places that you can actually work at. So opportunities are there. They're very high. You just make sure that you are looking at those opportunities and you're using social media for the greater good where you're connecting with these kind of organizations. 
So um, I know I have not really went deep into exactly what I do, but I really hope that it triggered something in your mind to say this, that there are various kinds of careers um, within the energy space where you have oil and gas, especially for those of you who were not even familiar at all around oil and gas. So if you need to reach out to me to find out a bit more, you can reach out to me on the social pages, um, both on Instagram and Twitter, it's Sikaka underscore energy. And, you know, we can communicate there, I can share even more information, direct you to the, to the right company links or application for internships or, or, or you know summer jobs and we can engage a bit more on those platforms thank you so much everyone thank you Peter Mello. um our next uh item is career in commercial law and Keshias munyai will take take us through that one Keshias. okay just sure is not muted Keshias, over to you. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I, um, hi, I just want to thank this opportunity uh, which I've been given by um, uh, my sister, Taina, <laughs> as you can see by the same name, Munyai. Um, well, I'm still a student at Vets University. I'm studying, uh, I'm studying BCom Law. So I, I, I think where I want to start, you know, I just want to start with the misconceptions which are there, you know, when you're in high school about what is law when you're seeing it on the movies and all of that. So law, when I was in high school, I just thought that, you know, I, you know, I have to know how to debate. You know, I have to know how to debate and just that. But, you know, it's more than that. It's not just about debating. You know, you have to use the right principles, you know, when you're debating and take those principles and apply them to the fact. So what are your principles? That's your law. You need to know your law. So that means you really need to study. You need to know your law and then use your law and, and, and apply the law to the facts. And yeah, you actually reason after that. That's reasoning. So now you ask yourself the subjects, which ones are more important? You know, you need English, which is, you know, what are your strongest points? You need that English because that's the one that you're going to be using so when you're reading all these cases, you know, that's the one that you need. So then, the route to law, you ask yourself, right? So the route to law, you can either study an LLB for four years, right? An LLB, which is only law, or you can either study a BA law, right? So what is a BA law? A BA law is where you mix law um, with the subjects of humanities, meaning your politics, art, you know, all these, you know, it's actually a bachelor of art. So, so after your three years, you can decide that, you know what, I think I'm more interested in law than I am interested in my art subject. So I'm actually going to go for a postgrad, which is your LLB. Or you can either go into BCom Law, which is what I did. So I think on that tip, I think I'll tell you my story as to why I went with BCom Law. So my story is very simple. I'm more, you know, I'm more interested in business. You know, I like business and I like numbers. I like math. So, um, in simple terms, so when I was in high school, when I was in your shoes, I was asking myself, um, which career can I do, which is in line, you know, with business, which can actually equip me, you know, with the right tools in order to, um, in order to compete in the business world. So when I was researching, I found that, no, you know, with the BCom, then you are actually in commerce, you find that, you know, you will do your accounting investment and that, then law, you will know your regulations meaning that you know you know how the industry works and what regulations to expect and all that so yeah so th that's what i found more interesting but i think where i am right now in my final year you know university i find myself more interested in investments by the way that's my story yeah so i'm um, actually i did my accounting my economics and all of that my numbers and all of that so that's what i did and yeah, so, or, you know, alternatively, you can actually pick any other degree, any other degree that is out there, you pick it up, then after that, you can go and do postgrad LLB for three years, meaning, let's say right now, you are doing your chemistry, and then while you're in your chemistry, you realize, oh, actually, I think I'm more interested in law, you know, I'm more interested in finding out how this, how this industry works, 
and actually in helping people. So yeah, so you can go and if you do your postgrad LLB for three years, you are allowed to. Yeah. So then I think with that, um, so now you're asking yourself, okay, now I have my law degree, but what can I do? Where can I work? You know, you can, you, you can either be a legal profession. So then what do I mean by a legal profession? By a legal profession, you know, I think if you move on to the next slide, let me call it show it. Yeah, you know, what do we mean by the legal profession? It's all these, it's all these people that you see on TV most of the time when you watch these shows where they're in court, you know, it's your lawyers, actually. What do you mean by lawyers? We mean your attorney and we mean your advocate. You know, I think it's all those people. Yeah, there's it on the next slide. So we mean your attorneys, your advocates. So you can go into those routes. There are, there, there, there are board exams that you need to write. You know, there are board exams that you need to write in order to qualify as an attorney as an advocate so um, so all of this is after you have your llb degree so you need to acquire your llb degree for four years and then go into practice and actually write your exams so there are routes there and then one of the other um um one of the other streams that you can go for is actually work in the public sector right so then you ask yourself what am i going to do in the public sector so you in the public sector you will be uh, you'll be working in the court, you'll be working in the state, you'll be in the government, you'll be dealing with legislation, you know, you'll be working in the criminal justice, you know, so that, you know, it's where you will be working most importantly, mostly. So you will be the one who is actually setting all the laws in the country. So when we have to sit down and, and you see and set the laws, so it's what you will be doing. You know, and set the laws of the country. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's what you can do in the public sector, and or also you can go and work. Um, actually, I think in the commissions and tribunals bodies, which is where they actually deal. Um, no, no, no. That's where they deal with the business regulations. You know, that's what they do. So you, what you are doing in the public sector is basically you are a regulator. You deal with legislation mostly. Yeah. Move on to the next slide, please. Or, yeah, uh, one other stream that is available is you can work in the, in the private sector, right? So where in the private sector, you can go and work in the banks. So it's where they need lawyers the most because we are dealing with a lot of contracts. You know? So when you go in the bank, there's a contract that you're signing. You know, yeah, um, it's where the lawyers are involved. We have to make sure as lawyers that no, well, no, we have to write all those clauses and ensure that we save the money of the bank, you know. So, so when you're working in the banks, you're actually dealing with money, but um, no, you, you are thinking in terms of money uh, and law. So that means you need to, uh, yeah, the most important is writing up your contracts. That's it. And then you can also work in a consulting and advisory firm, whereby, no, not that slide. I think if, not that slide. I think if you go back to the, right, yeah. And then there's also you can also work in the consulting and and advisory space, whereby, and on a whole, whereby you are working at at Ernst and Young, and all these other companies where you actually working at KPMG as well. And you're helping with the consulting and all that, using your law skills, your reasoning, because you are smart. You know, that's that. Or you can also work in the insurance space because they deal with a lot of contracts as well. You can work in the investment space. That means you need to understand your investments. You can also actually work in the financial planning and all these other companies. Yeah. I think if you move on to the next one, or you see, um, or maybe if you feel like, you know, I, yeah, I love law, but, you know, I just enjoy um, teaching it. So you can go and be a lecturer or maybe you just um, actually enjoy knowing more about the law and being a researcher and writing about law. So you can go and be a lecturer or a researcher where you teach the students or where you actually write about the law, write articles, you know, as to what you think about the law and what you think the law should be in the future. And, yeah, so it's where you you can argue and have all these debates and you 
as a researcher are the one who is going to influence all the guys in the public sector because you research what you think the law is in other countries and then you actually come back and actually tell them that no this is how the law is in other countries and this is what i think we should do in these countries and then they read your reports and all that and find out you know if maybe what you think is right so that's what you do as a researcher you research the law and yeah so i think there isn't much law that you don't know but you know i think you know most of them so i will end it there then if there are any questions obviously you can send them through at sub um yeah thank you thank you kishas um our next item is career in industrial engineering and eric sitole will take us through that one eric over to you just check if he's not muted. Thank, thank you very much, Mapule. Okay. A good morning to all. I want to start by commending the organizers of this event. Uh, this is epitomized community service, and it is more epic that it's happening on Mandela Day. I want to also congratulate the learners who are attending this and I want to say you are one of the few uh, and special people that really take serious what you want to do after high school and this day will probably be one of the days that you'll remember uh, later when you have become a lawyer, engineer, someone in uh, energy entrepreneur, a social worker, and all the, um, the careers mentioned earlier on. We can move on to the next slide. So as, as introduced, my name is uh, Eric Sitole, and I just want us to go, back, uh, to, go to, to basics and see what is happening around the world and why it's important that you choose something worthwhile to do after high school. If you look at the world by 2030, we are going to have some 8.3 billion people and a good number of these people will come from Africa. I mean, Africa population is expected to double by, by 2050. And we are also seeing very interesting trends. And these are trends uh, in the urbanization space. So 66% of the population are expected to live in urban areas uh, by, 20, by 2050. Urbanization, yeah, we're talking people moving to cities. You have already seen this. Probably your great-grandfather was, uh, was in the Eastern Cape rural, and now they are living in Johannesburg. Uh, I mean, or you, you are living in Johannesburg. Technology, uh, we saw this one of the speakers talking about um, IT. Uh, technology is expected to surpass uh, human wisdom very soon. Yeah, the computer that you use, the phone that you use, uh, the robots that you use to assemble uh, uh, equipment, material, goods, uh, is expected to think perhaps a little bit better than a human being. And this is just to bring it into perspective for you, with a population of 8.3 billion people uh, that is projected by 2030, here's what is going to be needed. More energy, 50%, more water, 40%, and more food, uh, 35%. These are just basic, uh, and these are basic needs, uh, water, uh, food, and, and energy. And this to me uh, says one thing and one thing only that it is clear each one of us has to play a role to keep this world uh, going that we actually found uh, going. Next slide. And this is about uh, myself. I went to uh, a high school called Lamula Jubilee Secondary School. This is in Midlands, in Soweto. 
and it's a public school. And one of the biggest challenge actually that I experienced uh, when in going through high school was to work with meager resources. While uh, people that go to private schools, they were doing chemistry in labs, I was told to imagine uh, mixing, mixing um, uh, you know, sulfur and, and, and hydrogen and getting hydrogen sulfide. I was told to imagine uh -huh. how sulfide uh, mm -hmm. smells. It smells like an egg and you must just take a rotten egg and boil it. That's, that's how hydrogen sulfide smells like. And the other challenge that we had at our school is the previous year, the class of 1999, the metric pass rate was extremely poor. And here I was in this very tough environment, in a tough place, and I wanted to get into university. And these are some of the actions that I've taken, is that I aimed for uh, level seven and uh, in maths and physics. Uh, by the way, this was a pipe dream at the time, given what was happening at the school uh, during the, the very same time. But I put plans into, um, into action. I traveled long distances. Those who can relate that know what, uh, so where to well, I traveled uh, with my other friend, uh, Polani, who would travel from Midlands uh, to Barra to go uh, attend extra classes for maths and, and physics. This is a distance for those that, were, that have not been to this place. This is a distance wow. 15 to 20 kilometers. And we did this as often as we were required to do it. The result that I, I was able to achieve is I managed to get uh, level six for both uh, maths and physics. And what I'm most proud of, in fact, is yes, I passed, I got into university, but what I'm most proud of is that I was able to inspire a lot of uh, young learners around uh, in, in, in the school. And they also achieved, some achieved university entries, University of Technology entries, and most, we are actually still friends until today. And uh, just to put that into perspective, not a long time ago, I received a message that I, I, I felt obliged to include it here. And this was from one of my um, uh, schoolmates. And this is what he said. I'm going to read the bottom um, message. He was just checking up on me. And he said, my leader, all is well. I remember your focus at school. Uh, some of us, we were easily distracted, but Eric Sitoli was very focused. I hope you haven't changed, my friend. So all I can share with you to pass your matrix and to get to university or to your next after high school is to be focused and to have goals and to look for help where you can uh, get, get, get help. Now, the next question, which is the most important question, perhaps proverbial in its nature, is what do you want to do uh, after high school? Uh, is it industrial engineering? Is it uh, law? Is it uh, uh, social work? Is it uh, geology? And this is up to you. Now, in terms of industrial engineering, industrial engineering it looks at uh, systems it looks at processes. Processes is the steps that a, a something takes before it, 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 it completes or it becomes. If I may take an example of a car, is you take a car without wheels, it's one process. You put doors, it's another process. You put wheels, it's a, it's a, it's a process. And assume it's a complete car, now you can drive off, you have, you have, a, full, you have a full car. We also here um, uh, integrate technology. You heard about the previous, uh, one, one, of, one of the speakers earlier talking about technology and how uh, you can use uh, technology to, uh, I mean, to, I mean, to, to get to as a career. And of course, 
uh, what is very uh, great about this, uh, this uh, degree of industrial engineering is that it also brings in a people aspect. Now, we use um, a number of, uh, of methods, be it mathematical, statistical, to integrate co complex systems and processes. And this uh, uh, definition, you can get it from this, uh, the VETS website. And I'm sure some other institutions uh, that I'm, I'm uh, certain that they offer industrial engineering, the uh, University of Pretoria, uh, University of Stellenbosch, I'm not sure about uh, UCT. Please go back to the previous uh, slide. Yeah, so th these institutions, they offer industrial engineering and I think University of Northwest as well offers industrial engineering. So you can go to their website and take a look uh, at, at the package. It's packaged differently. At University of Pretoria, you do first, sec two years, you do electrical engineering. And then the last two years, it focuses on industrial engineering. At Vets University, you do mechanical engineering the first two years. And then the last two years, you do your, um, your focus on, on industrial engineering. Now, here's what uh, industrial engineers, uh, the most important questions that industrial engineer uh, answer in industry or at work. A mechanical engineer will come with an amazing BMW design, but the most important question uh, that remains after that car has been designed is how, uh, how do these vehicle manufacturers economically produce hundreds of variations of vehicle types? I mean, you go to a dealer and you ask, please excuse me, you, you go to a BMW dealer and you ask, I want a three series. They're not gonna say, we don't have that. That car must be delivered to you, perhaps at, in, in a short period of, of time. And this is not only cars, phones, anything that is mass produced. How, how do we make healthcare processes more effective in order to ensure better healthcare for all? If you can look, when you go to a hospital, they say fill a form here, you will move to this place. After that, you will go to this place. For these processes to be effective and ensure that better, uh, better use of our doctors or health, healthcare professionals, it's important that, that an industrial engineering or someone with the knowledge of industrial engineering is involved to design the process uh, so that you, you get the most out of, out of that organization. How to minimize queuing? Uh, I mean, I'm sure you go into a taxi rank and you look, you say, oh, we are queuing and there's no signs into this. You go into a mall, you can see or there on the left-hand side, our malls have become more like taxi ranks now, especially with, uh, with the pandemic outbreak. Now, when you, when, when, when you get there, you say, how, how, do this, how, how are these queues determined? How do they know how many tellers to put in a bank? An industrial engineer is involved in, in those areas. And in fact, we had made tremendous progress, especially in the banking sector, in eliminating uh, or reducing queuing considerably. So there is a science in queuing. How now you have built something and this is a product that is working or it's a company that is producing uh, products. You want to continuously improve that product, make it uh, continuously relevant to make sure that it's not something that, uh, that goes uh, obsolete. And industrial engineering has techniques to make sure that you uh, can keep on improving a system, you can keep on improving a, an, an organization. Now, in terms of entry requirements uh, at VETS, I saw these uh, points, up, uh, they are 42 plus, and what they mentioned there specifically, you are looking at uh, your language, that's English, and uh, mathematics, uh, physical sciences, uh, all uh, level five, uh, and I mean, generally, 
generally speaking, generally speaking, if you get uh, if you get uh, something like uh, a level six in your grades, I mean, I saw a comment earlier on that said uh, minimum entry does not mean an entry to a particular degree. So if you get uh, level six, level seven, then you you can jump the queue of of, of the selection process. We can move on. Okay, can we move on to the next slide? Now, life after university, as an industrial engineer, what do you do? You do modeling, not the modeling as you know it, the, uh, the beauty modeling, mathematical modeling. And this looks at optimizing profits, at minimizing costs before we build something uh, big that requires a lot of money to build. We build a small part of it in a model, in a computer, and we see how it works and, and how it responds. To bring it to your perspective, is if you were manufacturing a BMW or a Mercedes, let, let's change now to a Mercedes, um, to, to a Mercedes uh, Benz. If you have a Mercedes Benz that you have produced and it's one only that you have produced. Someone in China wants it, someone in the US wants it, someone in the UK wants it, and someone uh, in, in Japan wants it. And perhaps someone uh, in Nigeria wants want the, uh, the same Mercedes Benz. How do you decide where to send this Mercedes Benz? Mathematical modeling can help you to decide to send uh, to, de uh, to decide where to send this, um, this Mercedes-Benz based on what you are going to end up with, not only as a price, because probably you'll be getting different prices from different, from different places. And in fact, this science uh, has its infancy in uh, the mathematics in uh, your grade 11, grade 12. Uh, I still recall there are, uh, there's, there's a section called linear programming. I hope it's not, they, they have not removed it in the curriculum. But you can just go yourself. It's normally weighted problems and it looks scary. But if you try it and try it again, you get to uh, understand and actually enjoy because it's, it's a science that helps uh, much easier. And then there was a digital, there's, there's also digital rollout. As, as uh, discussed earlier on by the person who, uh, by the speaker that uh, spoke about IT, uh, IT and IT developments, we are now uh, in the perhaps in advanced stages of the fourth industrial re revolution. That means that papers must go away. And that also means that some of the processes uh, that we use to get to something or to achieve something have got to be reviewed and be better. And the digital rollout is one area. And industrial engineers fit well here. Why? Because uh, they can integrate uh, systems, they can meet uh, people uh, as, as, as well as, as materials. And of course, as mentioned earlier on, you apply continuous improvement uh, techniques and you also get to manage, uh, to manage teams. You can end up, I mean, I've worked in various places. I've worked in, a, uh, in an office base. I've worked managing people going down, getting uh, out coal. So you, you, you get an experience, a well-rounded experience and without limitation. At the moment, in fact, I, I'm, participating while I'm working at, at SASO in strategy uh, formulation. And this is actually looking at uh, what uh, the future looks like, how will our, our company uh, be positioned in order to, to win. So you can see industrial engineer, in engineering, uh, there are no limits to it. You can work anywhere. You can work in a bank, you can work not, not as a teller, uh, as someone who's in the background looking at processes, looking at 
how to improve the overall banking uh, experience. You, you can work in a, in a, in a clinic uh, looking at how to ensure that people, when they get to the clinic, the processes, the filling out forms, going for medication and all of that, it's streamlined and it's, it's, it's in a way that it makes the experience a healing experience to the person that is there at, at, at a clinic. Now, some of the challenges that, that I have, that may I ask we go back to, to the previous slide. Some of the challenges that I've experienced um, is that university and high school, they teach you hard sciences and you can enjoy this, uh, but when you graduate and you start working, you work with people and you have got to be someone who can collaborate with others. So that, that, that is a skill. Another, another skill which is uh, much higher is actually you know, managing of people, is that you get to work and they say after one year, they say here's a team, manage the team. You, you are the manager and you are managing all the people, some of them older even uh, than your father. So it's, 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 it's uh, and what, what I did is I actually uh, got to learn that, you know, as long as you respect people, you can actually still lead them regardless of, of their ages. And some of the highlights, in fact, that I got uh, in my career, it, it was I mean, the successes that I achieved with these people that I, I was leading. Some of them, I mean, helping them achieve a bonus uh, while after staying for a long time without, uh, uh, without any bonus. We can move on to the next uh, slide. Now in ending, uh, as I mentioned earlier on, that to me, you are, um, you are the cream of the crop. You, for you to wake up and attend this, it means that you are very serious about it where you want to take your life. And I want to sum it with this uh, extract from a song I took from M People. And it, the song is titled, Search for the Hero. And I mean, all this it says is that, uh, <laughs> I see someone is asking me to, to sing it. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the full lyrics with me, but all it, the song uh, sings as follows, that you, you have got to search for the hero inside yourself. Um, search for the secrets you hide, and I'm talking about good secrets here, not the kind of secrets that when they find out you'll be in trouble. And search for the hero inside until you, you find the key to yourself. And I hope I've helped you to achieve uh, this by sharing my profession. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mr. Stolle. Uh, before I go to our last speaker, I just want to, I, I would like to apologize. We are running out of time, so we'll go a bit over the schedule time, maybe 10, 15 minutes, but we have only one uh, presenter left, then we're going to go into question and answers, then closing. Uh, just, uh, I would like to apologize to one student that has, uh, has been waiting to hear from mechanical engineer. That speaker did not make it, but mechanical engineering falls under what Mr. Tutole has just covered. Industrial engineering, they do the same subject adversity from first year to second year. Then they only uh, 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 differ when they get to three to four years. So, but then we'll just make sure in our next event, we do have mechanical engineer. Apologies about that. So yes. I will go. I'm happy, uh, Mapule, to answer the question about mechanical engineering. Okay, all right. So the other, the other thing, uh, Mr. Sutole, the other uh, thing I wanted to indicate is uh, the learners, please, uh, we'd like to encourage you to ask questions in the, in the chat options or uh, when we get to that item, just raise your hand and we will unmute you to, answer, to ask questions. Then our speakers will be able to answer. So we'll move on to the next item. Uh, we've got uh, a something different from everything that we have done. That's why we, we put it last, it's a special one. 
uh, on becoming an entrepreneur. So, Mr. Ike Lohoro, um, over to you. Let me just unmute him. Over to you, Ike. Uh, thanks. Hi, Mobile. Thanks. Um, uh, uh, thanks for everyone. Uh, as Mobile Abunchijo, my name is Ike. I'm the CEO and the founder of Studio Handcraft. Uh, yeah, now Yaga is, is totally different. It's not the same with this uh, other ones. So as we are unique, Irena. So yes, mm, the the important thing now I'm, I'm like okay, let me just say now ki 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 jira di that like I'm a shoe, I'm a shoe maker. In fact, I'm a, I'm a code winer. Uh, and you can also call me uh, a cobbler. So uh, what do we do? We make shoes, we make bags, we make wallet, and, and which is a self-taught. So uh, I started this thing in 2016 for making shoes, uh, and then, yeah. So uh, it's one of the things that Lauren Negujira then, yeah, was doing it well. So, yeah. So I want to go to my like, or a, like go to join my background and the other things. So uh, the the only thing I already realized is it's about uh, like finding yourself, finding yourself and 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 know what you want in life. You know, so because I had the challenge before. I already, uh, my family never understand the, who I am. Like what I'm doing, whatever she give you the project, my family never said nothing, then because I accept it as a young person. So, which can tell over I end up uh, fighting for it. I, I've never give up, even though my parents, they want me to be someone. And and, and which is something say over it. Nessing Jira or give figure over it. Like, Abandra, they understand. So, so we have one shower over the Lena Serna to the over it. Today is, uh, or maybe let's say, uh, between born and their life, between born and their future. Uh, our parents sometimes were mm -hmm. supportive, and sometimes they feel or uh, they want they want them only one of our like over go who no understand our reason. gang is this about you, you know? So, and which is challenge for us because we also have our our things in our mind. We, 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 we are totally different. We, we are not the same. So what I'm trying to show here, Gore, uh, the important thing is to find yourself as a young person. It's not an easy way, it's very difficult. It's a very, very, very difficult way and it's, it's, and it's challenging. Which is something, say, Gore, everyone, you know, got the bona in life, actually legend, and it is something at the end. So, but because of those, the challenge is still going on. So we end up failing and we end up in life. So Nagoya literally is a, is a time where you, you, you take decision. When you go by man, when you go by in your life, you know. So it's the right time to choose. If you can, if you can choose the wrong way, don't blame uh, someone at the end. <laughs> Because the only thing you know now, Oliver Lani Leona is a, is a young person, or is a Tawadira Mitrich. Uh, the only thing you Oliver Leona is, is the future, your future, or who we want to be. So my advice to you as a, as a learner's glory, uh, be yourself, choose the right thing and be yourself and then find yourself or not go any man and then what you want and gain so you can was your life and what's the best for you. So now in twenty uh in two thousand one I was I was I was playing Negra Daddy the those the, 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 the I was playing the trumpet. I was playing the trumpet since, since from two thousand one until two two thousand nine. So which was uh a journey 
and uh, like my family they didn't understand or not what i'm doing now so but because of that the love of what i was doing so i didn't give up so i i i, I fought until uh, i have my own band in 20 in 2009 i had my own band they were, they were so surprised wow from all the time we were doing this thing, Rohala, Rohala, don't do this, and then you were planning to have your own bed. So it's fine. CMS Bar accepted, but it was very difficult for them because they didn't understand also. So, but uh, I, I didn't give up. Until in 2016, I started making uh, the shoes. And, but before that, uh, I was also making uh, the graphics. Like I'm a, I'm a self-taught. Everything I it's, it's, I was just doing it for myself. I've never learned it from anywhere. I've never have any mentor. So I was just doing for for myself until I get it right. So in short, that's me. So in 2016, uh, I end up doing the uh, this project the idea that like uh, I told myself, you know what. Uh, as I realized the challenges in life and, and now we are living in uh, the the unemployment, the company retrenching people, uh, uh, like, you know, so those are the, 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 the things that demotivate you, you know what, we have to come up with the ideas as a young people, we need to come up with the, the solution because if you can, if you can check, uh, we, we we really uh, relevantly the challenge, the challenge uh, we are not we are not on the same level uh, on the same place like before. Before we were going to learn, but now we, we you uh, as as a, as a, as a young entrepreneurs, we have to create more jobs to other brothers and the sisters. Uh, I hear a lot of people in uh, the the, the the career and everything like you know so even on our side uh, we, we 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 can still work on it you know we have the banovan chiba little talent you know but the problem Corey, we 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 are not focusing we are not focusing so while we are not focusing so that means we can't find ourselves or our case in so those are the challenges as a, as, a, as a young people, but uh, in short, Ketra uh, onu wuncha ori the talent kin tumu tuabe no wanli on. So em to anele talent. I'm sorry. Em to anele talent. Uh, the talent yaga you can use it to make different things. It's not all about you. It's not like you can only make shoes or you can only make bags, you know. So you can also do things. Only Jirojiri in Chihuahua, they venture into fishing, they, 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 they venture into the visual art, they do a lot of things, you know. So the, the, uh, the talent in Noroshi is not enough. Because I realize already, it's not like once talent that uh, that's all uh, then I can also run a business can, you can use my talent to run a business so we still need to still need to understand uh, or the business is in a little so you have to go and learn more about the business because the talent and then the, and the business is totally different two things, the talent of the Leon and then the business of Sanjuro we establish. So that is the thing that I realize, or you know what, but if you have talent, then you can also run your own company, you can also run your own business, in which you need more to learn about the business. Business has a lot of things, a lot of things inside. The challenges they are very, very good, you know. So what I want to do, what I want to say for it, I want to encourage those young people who already have talent, they can sing, they can draw, they can they can do anything. Baba angwe kiti headdress, baba mbajira inye, baba roka, baba roka dia baba So those I want to encourage them already. Uh, they must also use their talent, and then by shumisha in a right way yore by go panchale the business, which the business is totally different things. You must go and learn about the business. 
you must go and learn or Ruth or how like this budget in child or draw your business plan how to do the the marketing those kind of the things so in tell or send your focus more on as a young as a young people or as a young entrepreneurs so uh the other thing I bet ke doing things better once you got the clear about you will know or not can say the word na o si jira better now take your time and focus once you can focus and then you take your time because i only into loro ga e jira wa jela mo di ma na sa focus the focus is very much important once you can focus and you can uh follow the 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 the, the procedure the way lord you live go or the way lord you want things to be go it will be like the way you want things to be go so uh in short i can say uh everything is possible in life lin namo ke fit lin tsena today uh it was just a self talk it's not like oh, there was someone who was pushing me there was someone who was saying i hey, do this and don't do this i was doing everything by myself and then today uh, everyone uh proud again na everyone or others mero go 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 jira everyone uh how we sure about about gonna le bona they doing the same thing in jira but the uh, the only thing in jira no ke fetse ke fetse i should and then uh and they thinking or making a shoes or rokadi that is something say the word say 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 out of the line see you regular to also but it's not like that rokadi that is one of the things you know if you can check the shoes is a necessity so say that see you like anyone see you like ranana or ke 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 ntse le gore it's not like that now i'm having my own office today because of making shoes or because of sewing shoes we we do repairing we do bags we do everything which one are you doing so those is one of the things extra we going to do is not all about what about in ghost rati well already the barogadi at fair no you can learn from those people and then you learn it and then when you take it to on that we take it to the other levels is not like we we feel complete or maybe we feel like all on our strategy and then we feel all on our strategy no no so and we have a lot of opportunity last year i got opportunity i got i have to go to italy to learn more about the shoes just that uh, i didn't make it because of the 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 challenge with the corona and the and the financial things you know so but i'm i'm still encouraging the young people by lore they want to venture into the lojama zone because if you can check now also an element we all want to be uh uh like babuji gadi uh gadi ca we all want to be the admin we all want to be you know so those are the things that our resanjo return our mind into to other uh, other side or level like side they more you know what for now because of the the situation in lebanon and leona as a as a country and uh, now we must come up with the with the other other things we must do things uh, differently so what i'm saying for uh, the young people they must banane differently you must think differently khale go dikolo na re tsebwa re na le di di bar giding eh na re na le jilo tsa tsana le bo di go di go diweke but now they are not longer there because of the our system million is 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 now waiting as if if i can do that in short because if you can check those things just on the good would work with the home economics ne even if you just already ruta go apia ne ba ruta go beta ne ba ruta go toroa ne ba ruta go jira go jira inchi so but we are not longer doing it for the good secondary anymore so those are the things in the jira one there in our scrabara focus on on the and keje logo ra nna on ju go logo ba kona le motho o jira e would work so this person into a jira mo se eh ke ntwe logo re ne re jira from go se go ntana but now ju ju ka mo kana ga jona jo a di salo so what i'm saying gore we need to we need to focus and be disciplined the last thing e ke na go go ntsha gore le nna i've been there because of our discipline you know 
you need to choose now. You need to choose or now get into a nyaga in life. You need to choose choosing the better things. You know, you need to obey discipline, you focus, and then what with this logic in Chichi Lord because in your life as a young person. So, uh, in short, I can say that and anyone will know, maybe you never join or you never venture into the handicraft things. They can also, that as or check with us, we can also advise each other or how we can do things or give them knowledge to us. Because it's, it's, it's one of the things in our region now. The talent is very much important. And then we also go to school for that talent. Could you talent and then why why go to school? And then things will be fine. Nothing is impossible. All right, thanks very much. Thank you, Ike. Um, okay, we have come to the end of our speakers. And the next uh, item on our agenda is question and answers. Just before we go to question and ask answers on Ike, uh, yeah, I think the main thing is if you if if you have not ma made it to those uh institutions that we listed if for some reason you tried to study but then at the end you still could not make it it's not the end of the world you can still find something that you can do with your own hands there are government companies that are offering uh, sponsoring like nyda which i think i, I also got a got a got a got an opportunity from there so yeah so as a learner it's not if if for some reason you did not make it, that's not the end of the world. So we will move, move on to the next uh, item, which is question and answers. I'll hand over to my, um, to my partner, Tiny Munyai, to take us through the question and answer. Tiny? Okay, so we do have a question for Ike. Um, would you say that your business is successful and makes good revenue? That's a question for you, Ike. Would you say that your Would you say that your business is successful and makes good revenue? It's coming from Mukoni. Thanks, Mukoni. I don't hear you clearly. Uh, I, the question is: uh, They are asking, do you think your business is successful and makes good revenue? I think Jebabu uh, Chawarna. How is your business? Oh, yeah. Are you making money? Yeah. Yeah, you know, you know, yes, yes. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, they must understand or it's, it's, it's not all about money. It's all about building the brand and, 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 and building the, the, the legacy. You know, the, 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 the business that makes money is, is a business that exists for a long time, you know. And yes, what I can say now, yes, I'm making money, I'm happy, and my business is doing well. But they, they, don't, they, they must also understand or the, the important thing uh, you can't just open the business today and then you end up making money. But the fact they go to any business, the aim is to make money. Thank you, Ike. Okay. Oh, sorry, Tiny. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. There's no other question, but uh, we also encourage learners to still uh, give us their questions and we'll make sure that they get the answers. So they can send their questions from the emails that they see on the screen. We are also in, on Facebook, so they can send their messages there. Okay, thank you, Tiny. And our last item on the agenda is remarks and closing, and also Tiny will also um, take us through the one. Oh, I see there's just a question that came now. Okay. Um, I believe this is for the IT uh, presenter, whom we don't have at this point. But it's saying, if you do computer applications technology in high school, is it an adva advantage when you want to do IT in the city? Um, I guess if you cannot answer it now, we'll take it further to the presenter. Okay, yes, we will note it down and then maybe if we can just ask uh, the person who asked the question maybe to leave their, their contact on, the, on, the, on that platform they're using on the chat or they can send us an email. I'm not sure if maybe they're not comfortable leaving the contact on the chat because chat is a public. They can also send us an, an email. 
Yes, Tabile, we do have your our email addresses there. So please send us your, your question for your email. There's there's another one from Refile. Um, is there a bridging cost to become a CA, a CA if you don't meet the minimum requirements? That's for Elrani. Do we still have Elrani online? Okay, let me just check if maybe it might be. Yes, she's she's there. Elrani, uh, what is the question? Do you, is the bridging cost? So yes, there is bridging course. Um, if you end up doing any other degree that is not um, um, accounting or become um, accounting science, you can do a bridging course. University of Johannesburg, they offer that. You'll do a bridging course for a year and then go do postgraduate for a year. With UNISA, they can take you back if you did maybe a non-accounting degree. Uh, at your undergrads, they will take you back to do maybe a third year of um, become account, uh, accounting science degree. So your, your journey will be a bit longer. So you, you must have um, like additional three years. It may take you another three years so that you can end up um, sitting for the board exam. So yeah, and there's other profession in the, in the accounting space, like if you did SEMA, and you want to convert to, to the CA that you can apply with SICA and then they can credit you, you will only write one board. So if you are not, you, if the, at the university you're not accepted for uh, become accounting and maybe you do another degree and later on you decide you want to do uh, a CA route, you can do bridging course. The university that offer is those two that I know, UNISA and UJ. Okay. Thank you, Aaron. Mapule, those are the questions we have currently. Okay. Thank you. I think we can, if there's no other question, then we can move to closing. Tiny, I think you are the, doing the closing. Yes, we 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 did a um, thing that maybe we did thought that there will be Elena who there's another there's, some... okay sorry to interrupt you. there's another question how important oh, this is getting kind of... into yes it's a question how important is it to get a mentor is it for everyone? Can be for anyone, <laughs> even you. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I thought maybe it was a follow up. No, you can take it for all the speakers. So <laughs> I'll give this to Elrani. Okay, <laughs> Elrani, did you mute? Check it. It's muted. Well, I think it is important to to have a mentor at any given um, age. You may be 12 years old uh, or 20 years or 18. The nice thing about having a mentor is it's someone that you look up to, someone who can help you in your career, uh, a profession who will assist with giving you guidance and someone you can talk to concerning your career when you want to shape it. I had mentors at a very young age and mentor does not have to be someone um, that you can talk to um, on a day to day. You can have a mentor that you, you just uh, take, touch base with them uh, once or twice a year. Or you can, I, had men, I, I use books to mentor myself. You know, you can also read books um, about great speakers or people you look up to. Uh, I think I only met people like Bo Wendy Luhabe once, but she's been my mentor. I've been learning a lot about her, following her, and reading a lot about what she does. And I've, I've, I've gained um, inspiration from her life. 
So if you don't get anyone that you can sit with, use the resources around you. Um, even if those people, you don't speak to them, they can be your distance mentors. Thank you, Erin. I think there's another one. Yes. Which career is the most wanted and demanded in SA when it comes to sciences? Okay. I think if, if, I was, if I was to answer this one, it's going to be on the challenges that SA is facing currently. So if you want to, and it also goes to your passion. So if you want to solve a certain challenge or to be involved in, in a certain challenge that the country is facing, then you have to go with that career. Okay, thank you, Tiny. Any more questions? Okay. Okay. I think those are the questions we have. Uh, can I just add something? Oh, there's someone who says I have a comment and one question. Yes, ask. No one has a comment. Mm -hmm. Or do they want us to unmute them? Mm. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll start with Ona. Ona, I'm unmuting you. Accept the meeting. Um, thank you very much and good morning, everyone. I just wanted mm -hmm. to ask um, which subject is needed if you want to be a private investigator? Tiny. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot say from my side, but I guess it's something that we can we can research on. Um, I guess if there's somebody who knows and who can answer on, uh, can they please just raise their hand? Or the other option, Ona, please give us your your number. I'll write it down. If we don't get an answer here, then we'll get back to you. Okay. Keshas is ready to take this one. Oh, Keshas. Okay. Yeah. Let me unmute Keshas. Is it still unmuted? Let me unmute Keshas. Okay, Keshas. Yeah, um, I'm actually in my, um, with my knowledge, the way I see it, if you want to be a private investigator you can also study law because law with what you learn from law is actually um <laughs> you learn the reasoning you know you learn how to reason you learn how to gather facts you learn how to you know how to solve problems so i think you know in so doing and then you'll find more you'll find other opportunities which are in line but i know that there's a friend of mine who studied law now they are actually in the route of becoming a private investigator you know because what you learn out of law is not only the law but you know it's actually how to reason for yourself it's, it's actually yeah you know how to investigate these things and actually know how to play with facts yeah i'm not quite sure if i've answered it properly but yeah that is that um thank you very much <clears throat> Uh, Ona, please just leave us your contact details just to get more information to add on what Keisha has uh, given you. Oh. Or you can send us an email. Okay. Moana has a comment. Can I have your email? Email is, is on the screen. Can you see the screen? Um. Let me check on the on the chat. It's not on the chat. We are sharing a screen. Can't you see the presentation? <clears throat> the presentation? No, okay. I can't. Okay, I'll send it on the on the chat. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Una. Um okay, let me Muano. Let me unmute Muano.
Okay, Moana. No, I'm taking off. Uh, good afternoon. Hello. Ah. Hi, Moana. How are you guys? Okay. Um, firstly, I would like to, to, to thank you for, for the opportunity. Uh, what you guys are doing is actually a great initiative. Um, just uh, looking at it from perspective that I... <coughs> already passed uh, out to um, I, I feel that um, this this initiative somewhere somehow you should not just um, take it from a perspective to say that you are a industrial engineer you are a CA accountant you are an entrepreneur but instead I'd advise that you guys just try and, and and do it collectively like generalize it in the sense that you come and present and say there is engineering in engineering there's this kinds of engineering uh when you choose the first one it could be in the industrial it could be electrical you know the so that they can i feel that somewhere somehow or uh, you you are limiting you are limiting the young ones from the information that you guys can provide to them right so i would just advise <coughs> perhaps in the next sessions we just go like okay today we are discussing about uh, engineering the following week or following session then we are discussing about law in general just go do like what you guys I could relate better to it because I'm already at the university. Understand? There's a lot of aspects that you guys are discussing with the young ones, of which I feel that it's just best to just say this session for you guys to to let them know who you are and what you do. But going on forward, then you should try tackle career fields in general and try and say when we do commerce this is what you can do this is how you can do it but otherwise i was very happy with with, with your presentations and how you tackled everything mm -hmm. wow well, thanks for thanks for that remark um <coughs> we'll make sure that uh, for the next events, we we do incorporate your your comment. Okay, there's another one. I think I saw. We have time for more. Sorry. I think I saw someone typing Renani. I have a question for everyone, yes. but I don't know if you want to ask it or she. Okay, let me let me unmute Randani. Uh, I have a question for Miss Irani saying that um, what are the what are the specific or direct subjects that a student <coughs> or learner with nine going to grade ten should take in order to become a chartered accountant? what are the specifics what, what what is the question what are the specific or direct subject mm -hmm. okay. a learner in grade nine going to grade 10 should take in order to become a chartered accountant okay um as long as you take pure maths uh, not the other maths and you do english so any university that is accredited by SICA, they will be able to take you to study uh, BCom. Accounting is good to have a background of accounting, but when you go to university, you're gonna start study a different accounting that you did in, in, in high school. So it's not really required, but as long as the, your, your maths and English performance is good, mostly maths, that's what they're gonna look at. The other subject you can just do well in them so that you can have high points because university like <coughs> that they will ask you for more points um in order to go to the uh, 
Bachelor of, Compute of Accounting Sciences. So as soon as you have maths, your English is also good, maths. The other subject, you can select any subject that, that you want. Accounting, if your school does, a, does provide accounting, you can do it. It will just give you a background. Um, economics, it will still be the same. I don't know if the, the, the high schools are still, uh, you still do economics. But back mm -hmm. in the day, there was economics. So you can take economics because you will, it doesn't change, it's the same. But accounting, it does differ from what you have studied, but it will be good for you to have a, a background knowledge of uh, what is accounting. But it's not really required when you go to, to universities. Uh, thank you. Okay. <coughs> Do we still have time? Um Apule for questions? Uh, okay, the time we've run out of time a long time ago, but I <laughs> think we had one last question from Badile. Badile. Yeah. So he or she is saying, is it safe to only be interested in one faculty? And in my <coughs> case, this is low. I have been told many times to consider other options, but I fail to shift from my love for law. Anyone willing to take that one? Yeah, I think I can. I'm not sure if I'm unmuted. You are. Yes. Okay, good. Um, you see, um, when I was explaining there, uh, when I was making my presentation about law, I was saying that you can either do a Bachelor of Arts with law, meaning that you are integrating your arts with law. So you are not really... Um, only do it law. So I think in that case, you might find yourself studying politics, you might find yourself studying international relations, you might find yourself studying psychology, but also still doing it with law. You know, so I'm, I'm, I'm so after three years, you will decide if you are more interested in law or you are interested in psychology. So you see, it's actually, so you, I'm so it's a way of opening your options, you know, but you are still doing law. So with the other options, you know, with the other option, which is become law, you know, you are doing your accounting, your investments, your economics, you're also doing math, you're also doing marketing, human resources, all of these, but at the same time, you're still doing law, you know, law as well. So you, you will have other law subjects as well. So, yeah, so I, I, I think that's the way that you can, um, actually try to bridge that um, thing of saying you need to have more options, which is what I did, which is why now I'm more interested in investments. When I started in your case, I thought I was interested in law, but when when I was in varsity, when all the opportunities opened up, I um, actually saw an interest in investments. So that's why. So I guess, you know, in order to be on the safe side and just actually open up all your options because when you're in high school, you never know, you know, as to um, whether you are interested in law or maybe you are just influenced, I guess. Yeah, that's in answering that question. <clears throat> Thank you, Kishis. Zanga, want to add? Let me unmute Zanga. Um, on that question by Martin, I just want to say, um, so from learners in grade 9, 10 and 11, I think grade and grade 11 and 12 are very busy. So you would find that you hardly have any time to do any vacation work or job shadowing. But what I want to say is um, learners may look into um, getting um, information or exposure to different industries and career streams. I, for one, from grade nine, grade eight, nine, I've did uh, job shadowing as a, an assistant in a police station. I've worked in a hospital. <coughs> I've worked in a property and conveyancing law firm. I've worked in an energy and construction firm. I've been to places where people are making clothes. 
Uh, so I've kind of grew up in a space where I was exposed to different industries and different career streams that allow, allowed me to get to, uh, cho- to make my choice in following the law path. But in still in the in law, um, I'm interested in medicine a lot. I'm interested in energy and everything. So it, I'm, I've always opened myself to learning in the different industries. And maybe to add <coughs> on to, um, to what Keisha was saying, you, you need to allow yourself to learn. The more you learn, especially in the lower grades, by the time you're in grade 12, 12 you're most likely to kind of have an idea of what exactly you want to do. So I was just saying to those in grade nine and 10 and 11, please make use of your, um, of your vacations when school is closed. Um, ask someone you see, someone you, you, you see working or you know who's working in a, in a field you're interested in. Ask if you can join them at work to see what they do, if you can ask them. Um, I think career expos are great and I love what um, you guys are doing. And also I'm saying to those in the lower grades, don't always wait for a career expo to, to learn. Um, take up the time you have in March, June, September, December <coughs> to actually learn. So I just wanted to add on that one that please, if you're in grade nine and you haven't like, you don't, you haven't like chosen the kind the subjects you want to do in grade 10 to 12, please try as much as you can to learn and get as many opportunities as you can. It's always great. You always network from a young age, which is also good, especially if you're also in the law field. Thank you. There's a question to, who was speaking, Coach? Tanga. Yeah, they're saying, is it advisable to do job job shadowing at this time in grade nine? Tanga? Yourself. Okay. okay, thank you so much. Um, so, uh, well, there's COVID-19 that we're dealing with at this point, and many people wouldn't really open that space or opportunity, but um, they are, they, you can take an option of doing things online. So I, for one, I took an opportunity to tutor, so I'm tutoring and learning other things. There are also online courses you can take. For instance, making an appointment with someone like about um, Ereroadni, you can take information from other speakers here, talk to them. If they have the, 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 the time to assist, um, you might find that they might help you by just communicating. You don't necessarily need to be there physically sometimes, like in the circumstances we're in. You can use an opportunity of, of, of taking a call from someone for an the good 10 minutes, you can ask your questions, you can learn more. Um, others are doing community service, provide, um, distributing um, what you call uh, essential needs, food, stuffs and stuff. Um, there are a lot of firms also doing that. It's not safe for, for, for learners also because of COVID, but for someone like me, um, distributing foodstuffs because I'm working, or I got introduced to a certain firm, get more information on law. So I'm basically saying if you can use anything online uh, over the phone, do it. But if you have an opportunity and it's safe, um, you can also take that one and, and use it as well. <clears throat> okay. Thank you, Zanga. Um, this one is for Asinne. Is it hard to find a job with a geology degree and what subjects do you need to do geology university? Asine, please unmute. As accept unmute. Asine, maybe it's going to drink water. I'm trying to unmute to ask him to unmute. Asine. Okay, so we'll take that to Asine. Please um, give us your contact. T. So it's coming from T. What is the question? 
is it hard to find a job with a geology degree and what subjects do you need to do? Oh, that is going, to that's the one that is uh, going to ask me. Yes. Okay. Okay. Please give us your email address, uh, T. So, Asine can respond later since it seems he's just a, a bit far from his laptop. Those are the questions we have. There's a comment from Georgina saying, some companies are age restricted. Not sure if it's from 17 to 18. I think she was adding to the job shadowing. I see there's a question there about geology. Yes, oh. I see uh, What is it? Is it hard to find a job with geology degree and what subject do you need to do geology university? Okay, then I'm going to Right now, in, in, in geology as such, I can't say it's, it's difficult to get a job, but yes, there's some sort of a level of saturation that the, the, the industry is reaching with respect to how many geology candidates can be absorbed by the industry. But when you look at the cycles of, of how the, the mining industry functions, we are approaching or we are right at the edge of another boom where we are going to get a shortage in the amount of geology with respect to the geologists that we have in the uh, who are currently available. So as much as it looks like we have we have reached a, a, a point where geologists are not being absorbed by the industry, the, the opposite is starting to happen where we are starting to be absorbing them very quickly and like I'm saying, there is going to be a shortage of geologists very soon. And in terms of the subjects, I think I indicated that the key subjects are your, your English, your pure maths, and the, the physical science. Other things like geography, biology, and additional language are just things that you should also have, but the key ones are the English, science, and, and, and mathematics. Okay. I only wanted to add on Georgina's comment. Okay. Sure. Relani, I'm asking. Okay. Okay. Um, I just wanted to add, I think this is Georgina probably was adding on what Zanga said and also a follow-up question from Rendani. So a student company do accommodate student for maybe a day shadowing. I, uh, I hosted two students last year. So normally what you have to do, some, some students come with, um, maybe it's part of their, their, their subject. I don't know what subject require you guys to learn about different career choices. But even if it's not a subject, you can ask what company will want is your parents or your guardian to sign a form that allows you to come to the company and spend a day. So you can shadow anyone that you want as long as you approach the company in time and then your guardian can sign uh, a letter or, or your parents or, or your guardian can do that request on your behalf and you can go and spend a day there. So it's, it's not taken as a work, work as a work because you are under age. Probably they won't accommodate you if you said, oh, I'm looking for a job. But if you said you want to shadow the CEO, the CFO or whoever, our CFO, our CEO also uh, hosted a student last year. So many companies are open. It's just now because of the COVID, I don't think they will be willing to accommodate because there's no one in the office in most companies. People are working from home. But if when things go back to normal, if they will, we don't know, you can follow that route of uh, sending an email or your, your, your guardian making a request on your behalf and then you can go and spend a day with whoever you are interested in. It's very nice because you will get an opportunity of meeting other people. You end up maybe wanting to do another follow-up uh, visit. 
So normally company call them uh, a visit or, or, or hosting a student. So not really working. So if you say you're looking for a job, of course, because you're under age, they're not going to accommodate you. Thank you. Napole, is there any other comment or question that we have to address? Yeah, it's uh, from Chris Ratebe. Maybe say maybe you should mention next steps as part of closure so that you can release the bulk of people and those of us with more comments and questions can remain. So I think he's just saying we can maybe go try to go to remarks and closing and then we can still remain behind those who are willing to remain behind for more questions. Oh, okay. I think then you can go to, to our last item, then if there's still more, we can remain. Okay. So in terms of remarks, I, I, I guess we did get uh, good comments um, to improve on for our future events, similar events. Um, and we also got good comments from our presenters as well. Uh, we just we would just like to thank the presenters for all the inspirational stories, all the information they have shared. And we humbly request that they become available for further engagements with the learners. We also thank our young people for attending. We are available for further questions and further queries. And we hope that you are now equipped with enough information that will take you through. So as part of EdSub SA, we assist learners with their careers in terms of career choices and uh, career guidance as well. We also are running a campaign currently that is to assist learners with their applications. So for more information, you can get us on Facebook and also send us an email on the email address that you see on the screen. Um, growing math is tutoring mathematics. So Mapule, maybe you will take them through on how they can engage with you going forward. Okay, uh, thank you, Tiny. Um, I also just like to thank everyone for participating. Unfortunately, we did not say thank you at the, maybe we we're supposed to do this at 12 o'clock before people left as the meeting was scheduled until 12 o'clock, but thank you everyone uh, for attending. Thank you parents, thank you aunties and uncles for allowing your kids to join us and uh, from my side, as I said in the beginning, I'm the founder of Growing Maths. Growing Maths, we are, are doing online uh, maths tutoring, so we're providing maths lessons. It's done online now because of the current situation, so in the future it, it will also be done on one-on-one, -on -one. so on, in, in person or physical. So we we uh, providing maths lessons to, for now I'm saying grade 8 to grade 12, but even your grade 7, I can still assist with that. So for more information, if your child is struggling or if you are struggling with maths, I'm offering some uh, uh, lessons for that at, the, at a certain price. But you can, you are welcome to email me at growinmaths81 at gmail.com or you can also uh, find us on our Facebook page, which is Grow in Maths. And yeah, so thank you. And that's us. Back to you, Tiny. Yes, I think that's it. We, we thank you so much. So all the uh, people who have further questions, I think they will remain as suggested and we'll try to address Those who their don't questions. mind uh, remaining for helping with the answers so they can remain. Thank you, everybody. So I see there's still, yeah, there are still some more questions. There's one question from T. Do you want to go through the tiny? She is asking, I think this was answered by Asine. Do you need maths literacy and physical science for geology as I only do geography, geography and English? 
So he answered that you need pure maths and physical science. Yeah. Then, oh yes, oh, I see the answer, okay. Okay. I don't see any more questions. There are no more questions. Okay. I Thank think you, we have everybody. To pause then. Please make use of our contact details for further engagement. Okay, thank you everyone. Bye. Thank you. Enjoy your weekend. Okay, I see Chris is interested in. Okay. Will there be another session from T? Maybe you should answer that, Mapule. Yes, there will be. <laughs> this year. There will definitely be another session. <laughs> <laughs> but then when it's just a matter of when. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we are available T for, for any further question. Yeah. Recording. Okay. Uh, Moano, please leave. And if you would like to share the recording, you will need to leave your email address. And hopefully, your email address is a Gmail because it's it, it's a it's, it's quite a big. It's gonna be a big document, so we we'll need to share it on Google Drive. Okay, she has left her email, email address.